Thanks, Dr. Tana, for the introduction, and thanks, APAC, for providing this platform to share our work with our overseas colleagues. This presentation is uh, the sub-analysis of PrEP appeal study. In this analysis, we measure preferences for PrEP among men who have sex with men in Australia using a discrete choice experiment. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the, all the effort that our team put into making this study happen. Let's start with the background. In, 20, in Australia 2022, there were 555 new HIV diagnoses, summing up to about 29,000 people living with HIV in the country. Among those with new HIV diagnoses, 57% were men who have sex with men. Now let's look at the trend in HIV notification among these populations. There has been a reduction in HIV notification among these populations since the PrEP implementation in 2016. It seems like we have a good result, but there is a problem. So the recent research just found that approximately 30% of those who initiated PrEP discontinued it. There are several factors that influence PrEP appearance and PrEP uptake. In this study, we will look at the preferences for PrEP among MSM. DCE or discretion experiments is an established method for quantifying the strengths of preferences. This method simulates a real-world situation where respondents are asked to choose between a series of service packages that provide them with the highest satisfaction. Here's an example of DCE in our daily life. When people want to buy new phones, they have to compare between different phones and have to compare between um, the specifications, prices, and brand of the phones. And then they pick the phone that provides them with the highest satisfaction. So in this study, we used a DCE to identify subgroups with similar preferences for PrEP to, and explore heterogeneity preferences for PrEP between individuals in different age groups and from different countries of birth among men who have sex with men in Australia. The result of this study can inform the design of acceptable and desirable services and demonstrate PrEP demand in Australia. How did we do it? The survey was created and launched in Australia between May to November in 2022 via popular gay dating apps such as Grindr. And we also distributed through local MSM community social media platform and social media influencers. Here's an, here is an example of the DC equation from our survey. So participants were asked to choose between prep program A and prep program B. Each prep program con consists of different attribute levels. So participants have to pick which prep program that they prefer more or they can choose to opt out. Here are the final attributes and attributes level included in our survey. You can find this list in our full report, which I will give you the link at the end of this presentation. Inclusion criteria, we included men who have sex with men who were at least 18 years old, had no prior HIV diagnosis, who live in Australia and self-identify as gay, bisexual, or other men who have sex with men. In this analysis, we used Latin class model to explore subgroups of participants with similar preferences, and we also used random parameter logic models with interactions to explore the hetero heterogeneity of preferences for all participants in different age groups and from different countries of birth. Result. In total, we included 1,892 participants. The mean age was 40. 45% of the participants were current PrEP users, 37% were naive PrEP users, and 19% were former PrEP users. The majority of the participants were born in Australia and had fewer than 11 sexual partners in the last six months. About half of the participants had, had high community engagement and the other half had low community engagement. Here's the result from the Latin class analysis. 
four classes were identified. In general, individuals in all classes prefer free prep and being offered STI testing as an extra service. And they dislike to pay 100 Australian dollar for prep or visiting prep every two months. And they dislike prep service that offer no additional services. Now let's look into the difference in preferences in each class. About 22% of the participants were likely to be in class one. This class prefer long acting oral or injectable prep from peer led community clinics. Meanwhile, individuals in class two prefer daily oral prep from pharmacies. And about 5% of the participants were likely to be in this class. And participant, um, individuals in this class were likely to be prep naive naive PrEP users. The majority of the participants were likely to be in class three. This class prefer long-acting oral PrEP from pharmacy. And individuals in this class were likely to have low risk of HIV infection and low community engagement. One-fifth of the participants were likely to be in class four. This class preferred injectable PrEP from the hospital. And individuals in this class prefer to pay up to 50 Australian dollar for PrEP, and they did not mind mild pain at the injection site as a side effect of PrEP compared to other side effects. When we look at the driver of PrEP use for each class, sorry, um, class type of PrEP was the most important factor for PrEP use for individuals in class one, visit frequency for individuals in class two, and cost for class three and four. Here's the result from the RPL model with interactions. When comparing preferences for PrEP between MSM up to 30 and over 30 years old, older MSM prefer daily oral PrEP and they dislike PrEP with interaction with other medication as a side effect. When comparing preferences for PrEP between Australian born and overseas born MSN. Overseas born MSN prefer injectable PrEP and they dislike rations of kidney problem as a side effect of PrEP. Here are the key takeaways. First, there is a discrepancy between the demand for PrEP services and the existing PrEP service. Over half of the participants required PrEP programs that were unarrivable, such as long-acting oral PrEP or accessing PrEP through pharmacies. Second, there was a significant group who preferred injectable PrEP and they were willing to pay some cost for it. Third, overseas-born overseas MSN prefer injectable PrEP compared to those who were born in Australia. Lastly, older adult MSN prefer PrEP with no interaction with other medication. And thank you for your attention. Here's the link to our, um, the full DCE report. Thank you. Yeah.